I'm really excited about this week's topic because it's one of the hidden gems of the Redux world. We're going to be talking about the library Reselect. Reselect is a support library for Redux, so usually if you're using Redux, you might want to look into using Reselect. Let's talk about what Reselect is and how it's going to help us out. Reselect is used to compute derived or calculated state for Redux projects. So that doesn't really make a lot of sense as a definition. This is one of those libraries where it makes a lot of sense to work through a little bit of an example ahead of time. So let's talk about the example we'll be working through and how Redux, or excuse me, Reselect is going to help us out. So let's look at a diagram or mock-up of the project that we're going to build. We're going to be building a small application where we fetch a list of posts from some third-party API, and really it's just going to be a bunch of fake data. To the left of each of these posts, we're going to have a little checkbox. Whenever a user clicks in the checkbox, it should consider this post to be selected and add it to a selected post list at the top of the application. So you can see in this particular case, I have selected a selected post and another selected post, and so I see both of those at the top of the page. All the rest of the posts are not selected, and so they're only on the all posts list and they're not reflected on the selected post tab up here. So let's talk about a little bit, you know, how we, might we approach this if we were using just React and Redux by themselves? How might we uh, tackle this application here? So we might have a post reducer. The post reducer's purpose would be to probably go and fetch those posts and kind of hold them in a big array or perhaps object. So we've got a big collection of posts inside of our post reducer. In this diagram, I've reflected six different posts, but in the actual application we're going to build, we can have up to 100 or however many different posts we want to load. Now, whenever a user clicks a checkbox next to a post, we're not going to modify the post model itself. Remember, whenever we have some type of temporary UI state, and certainly selecting a post is temporary UI state, we would not modify our underlying data structure or our underlying model. Instead, we might create a selected post reducer. The selected post reducer would hold an array of IDs for each selected post. So if we click the, the checkbox next to post one and post five, I would expect my selected post reducer to have an array with the numbers one and five, reflecting post with ID one and post with ID five. So then when we decide, hey, I need to render a list of all the selected posts on the screen, like it's time to show this data. The data that we really care about, which is contained inside the selected post reducer and the post reducer is a product of both of these. So we want some calculated piece of state. We want to take two separate reducers or two separate pieces of state and calculate a new piece of state out of the two of these. So this is a classic use case for the reselect library. Reselect is used for exactly the situation right here. Whenever we have one or more different pieces of state and we care about a value that is the product or calculated uh, result of these different pieces of state. So let's take a look at how we might approach this problem if we were not using reselect. So this is going to be a bad approach. This is something that we probably would not want to do. So let's say if we just want to kind of hack it together and get this thing working, we might have a post reducer. We've got our selected post reducer, and then we'll make a selected post list component. And inside of the selected post list component, we'll have some fancy logic for saying, okay, for each selected post, let's figure out whether or not it's selected or what have you. So we've got some Lodash logic in here where we'll filter over the list of posts. And then if each post is contained within the selected post IDs array, then OK, let's keep it. It must be a selected post. So this is definitely a solution, but I would say it's a pretty bad approach. Number one, it relies upon the selected post list component to have some very explicit knowledge about the data structures of the post reducer and the selected post reducer as well. So it, the selected post list component has a lot of knowledge of the application state. Secondly, logic to figure out the currently selected post list is not reusable in other locations. If we're putting this code inside of the post list component, then we can't easily reuse this in other places in our application. If it turns out, hey, maybe this other area in our application cares about the currently selected post list as well. So this is perhaps not the best approach. Let's take a look at how we would solve this using reselect. So this is a very straightforward, very simple diagram just to start. We're going to walk through an actual live coding example here in just a second, but let's start right here. 
The idea behind reselect is that we create what are called selectors. Selectors will take in different pieces of state, do some calculation, and then spit out some data. So if we create a reselect selector to calculate our selected posts, we'll take in the total big pool of posts, the selected post IDs, and it will spit out the selected post list, which would presumably be just the post model with ID one and the post model with ID five right here. So this is the idea behind reselect. Let's take another look at what this looks like in practice. So very similar diagram here, but just to make sure it's really nice and clear, we will take one or more pieces of Redux state, we pipe it into our selector, and then out comes our derived or calculated piece of state. So when you're working on your own projects, if you ever feel like, okay, I've got this big list of data over here, and I've got a big list of data over here, and the data that I really wanna show is kind of the product of these two things, perfect, perfect use case for using reselect. Okay, so enough diagrams, let's walk through a very practical example. In my browser, I've got a small, I got kind of half the application already written here. So you can see on my screen, I've got a list of all posts and all posts currently have a checkbox next to them. And I've already wired up some action creators and some reducers where if I select a post, you can see down here in the bottom right, this is my Redux dev tools. I have my post piece of state and I've also got selected post IDs piece of state as well. And so I just checked the first post on here and now inside of my array of selected post IDs, I have post with ID two, which would presumably be this one right here, and post with ID one, which is the one at the very top as well. So let's do one more. And now we've got three items in selected post IDs. And we have IDs two, one, and three, great. So our job here is to create a new component that's gonna sit above the all posts component, and it should display the currently selected posts. So the actual like kind of post text that's on here right now. So let's give this a shot. I'm gonna flip open my code editor. And the first thing I'm gonna work on is going to be my selected posts selector. So this is where we're going to immediately dump into the, jump into the reselect stuff. Inside of my source directory, I'm gonna make a new folder called selectors. So I always like to keep all my selectors in one discrete directory. So any future developers who come into my project know, okay, I've got all these nice utility selectors I can make use of if I so require. Inside of my selectors directory, I'm gonna make selected post.js. So this is gonna be my reselect selector. Takes a list of posts and post IDs and picks out the selected posts. So let's get to it. At the top, I'm going to import create selector from reselect. So this is a method that we're going to use to create a selector. Remember, a selector takes a piece of state, one or more pieces of state, and it ships out some new or derived calculated piece of state. To create a selector, we are first gonna create two functions to pick off the pieces of state we care about. So the first thing we're gonna do is create select functions to pick off the pieces of state we care about for this calculation. So I'm gonna make a post selector. This post selector that I'm gonna create is gonna be called with my global application state. So I'm gonna use a fat arrow function and off of here, I'm gonna take off my list of posts. So state.posts. I'm also gonna get my selected posts selector. So from state, I'll take state.selectedPostIDs, which are my the, the array of selected post IDs. Now I'm gonna create a function that's going to do the calculation between these two pieces of state here. So this is the part, part where we're gonna stuff all of our complicated logic. logic. I'm gonna say const get posts, the first argument is gonna be whatever comes out of the post selector function right here. And we'll talk about exactly how this stuff all gets wired up in just a second. Just bear with me for a moment. So the first argument will be whatever comes out of this first function here. So it'll be my list of posts. Then the second argument is going to be my list of selected post IDs. So I'll take my selected post IDs. Now I'm gonna also make use of Lodash 
to help with the actual calculation logic here. So my selected posts, the actual post model, the actual object that has the text, the ID, the created at, all that kind of good stuff, I'm gonna find by using filter, I'm gonna filter over my list of posts and for each post, I want to retain the post if it's contained within the selected post IDs. So for each post I have, look through the array of selected post IDs. If the post ID is present in that selected post IDs array, then I want to keep it around. That's what the filter is going to do for us here. Then finally, I can return my selected posts. Okay, so now here's how we kind of wire this all, stuff all up together. Certainly these first two lines up here, definitely a little bit confusing. Let's see how it all gets wired together. At the bottom, I'm going to export default, create selector. My first argument is going to be post selector. Second is going to be selected post selector. And finally, get posts. So here's how create selector works. We pass in some number of kind of state selecting functions, however many we want here. We could have had several more if we so chose. Whenever our global Redux state changes, each of these preliminary functions or these preliminary selectors are going to be executed. So they're going to run again. Whatever value they produce is then going to be sent into the last function, the last function that's provided as an argument to create selector. So our last argument to create selector is always going to be the function that does some amount of logic for us. So let's mark this down as a comment. Last argument is the function that has our select logic. And then every other argument before it is going to be pick off a piece of state. Pick off a piece of state. So now whenever my global Redux state changes, whenever I've got a new selected post, my pick off functions are going to update. They're going to run again. If they produce some new piece of state, so if they've changed, they're going to get sent to get posts again. Get posts is going to run. It's going to find the currently selected posts and boom, there's my calculated or selected derived data. So now let's create a component to actually consume this list of data. I'm going to make a new component inside of my components directory called selected posts list. And inside of here, we're just going to use that selector. So we're going to make a small functional component that's going to take this list of selected posts and then just render a single li for each of them. So let's set up some boilerplate. We'll import React from React. We'll definitely need to make access to Redux state. So I'll bring in Re React Redux. And then I'm also going to import the selected post selector, which is what we just created. So we'll pick this from selectors selected posts cool now selected post list and this is going to be a functional component and i'm going to assume that inside of here uh, my props is going to contain a property uh, called post or posts excuse me and that post is going to be the array of selected posts that i care about that are being produced by the selected post selector so now inside of the return statement i'll put down a ul and we'll add some nice bootstrap classes just to make sure everything looks good. Then inside of here, I'm going to do my map over my posts array. So this post right here is my selected post. It's, what it's whatever is being produced by my selector. So for each post, we're going to return an li, the class name of list group item, a key of post.id, and post.title. So post.title is the actual post text that we saw in the application earlier. So now we need to do the interesting part, which is to wire up our selected post selector. So I'm going to define a map state to props. And inside of here, we'll return posts. And now here is where we make use of our selected post selector. So we import it at the top. Here's our selector. We're going to say selected posts selector, and we're going to pass state to it. So remember, state is an argument to our map state to props function. So we take our total global application state, we pass it to the selector, and the selector basically just takes it from there. 
Once selected post selector gets this new piece of state, it's going to rerun the two functions that slice off small pieces of state, and then it's gonna rerun our get post function right here to do the actual calculation. So whatever gets returned from this calculation function right here is what's going to end up inside of posts. So now at the bottom, we'll export default connect, map state to props with selected posts list, which is the name of our component that we just created. And actually selected post list, we want this to be, oh, I think we went with a plural all the way through. So selected posts, selected post list. Okay, last step, we need to make use of this component inside of our application. I'm gonna flip over to the app component, which is currently showing our list, our posts component, and we'll import selected post lists. And now, inside of here, I'll put on a new H4. We'll say selected posts, and I'm gonna place my selected post list component, and I'll put an HR between the two. So let's try this out in the browser now. I'm gonna flip back over. Let's refresh. Hopefully we don't have any typos. I think we got a typo somewhere. Uh, I cannot find module components, selected post list. Either I've got a typo. And I think I do. I got one extra semicolon where I definitely should not have it. Let's take that out really quick. There we go. Now we're back to good. Let's refresh. So we load up our list of posts. Here they are, and now I can select a single post and it gets added to my selected post pool. So you can see that now I'm not recording any extra data here. I'm only recording the essentials. Just, I've got my big old list of posts, the big post pool, and I've got my selected post IDs. So I'm not duplicating any post models. I've always got just a single post model throughout my entire application. If I want to select it, I just add the ID, and then my selector will automatically run some calculation on my list of posts and my selected post IDs, and boom, that shows up as my derived or calculated piece of state. So this is kind of a trivial example with uh, reselect, but I'm absolutely positive as soon as you start working on any Redux project, you're going to start running into situations where you have two or more pieces of Redux state and you want to execute some type of calculation on it. So whenever you're in that type of situation, I encourage you to check out the reselect library. If you enjoyed this video cast, I encourage you to check out rallycoding.com. We've got weekly videos on React and Redux topics. If you're interested in hearing about any different topic, you can always send me a message via YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, whatever you want. Just let me know what you want to hear about. I'll catch you next week.